Holy cow, Batman. I was not ready for this. Look, look what arrived today. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Well, if you happen to have seen my last video, it's uh, where I shared that I was, uh, I'd picked my second scope and I had uh, placed an order. Uh, what I was not prepared for was how quickly it would arrive. I thought that I wouldn't get it until the end of August, uh, early September, but yet it, it went out my front door this afternoon and, uh, and there it was. So I, I, I'll be honest, I'm not prepared. I was going to use the time between now and uh, late August, early September to kind of get my checklist together of how I was going to sequence uh, bringing uh, the, my new Celestron uh, Edge HD 8 up. You know, I'm kind of a checklist driven person and, um, you know, I thought I would sit down and uh, write a procedure essentially on how to bring it online. Uh, that's the way I prefer to do things. So, I mean, I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to get started on it sooner or later. Now, I've only got uh, a partial order. I ordered several items. So, uh, what I thought I would do is, since I made a change or two based upon uh, the feedback of uh, several viewers, I thought I would share with you uh, what the final order looked like and uh, what I still need to order that I have not um, uh, ordered yet. So, let me see if I can safely uh, move this uh, new scope over onto the couch. I've got it sitting on... Uh, the books Inside Picks Insight and uh, three books from Charles Bracken, including the Deep Sky Imaging Primer. If you're a newbie uh, and you're looking for some good reading, clearly the uh, Deep Sky Imaging Primer, I think the third edition might be out now, is, uh, is a good resource. So I'm actually going to purchase the third edition. I hear there was some changes made to it. So uh, let me see if I can safely move this without dropping it. I was down at, uh, in Landers at Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station one night, and I did hear a thump, and someone on one of the other pads had lost the uh, edge uh, HD off their mount. And, uh, you know, so having uh, seen that incident, I want to be very careful with this scope also, I'm going to preserve the original packaging because I'm uh, essentially a traveler. Uh, I think I'll initially set it up in my backyard but um, to start to get things dialed in, but I'm going to be traveling with this. So I am going to need to protect it from the vibrations and the bumps and everything uh, uh, that uh, happen when I'm in my uh, camper van. So let me see if I can move it over to couch. and move these books and then let's go over to this window here so as you notice here and again I'm, I'm gonna give a plug for OPT and in full transparency I have an affiliate marketing relationship with OPT uh, if you're uh, looking to purchase from uh, OPT and you use the link in my video description uh, I'll get some affiliate uh, marketing uh, credit, uh, and it's a, it's a good way to help the channel. It doesn't cost you anything in the, in the process. And um, the other morning when I uh, was looking to make a purchase, I decided to go with OPT and see what the experience was like. And I worked with uh, Kurt at OPT and he did a fantastic job, was very responsive. I asked him to build me a solution because I, you know, I, I wasn't quite familiar with everything that I might need and uh, Kurt was excellent to work with and, you know, the, uh, the scope shows up on my doorstep today. Now that's, that's pretty quick. So, um, you know, uh, I was very fortunate to find one that was in stock because I understand other people have been looking for them and uh, may not have been so lucky. 
So um, again, this is uh, this is the the initial order. As you see here, the uh, Edge HD eight at uh, fifteen ninety nine. Uh, the Celestron T adapter for the scope, as I understand it, you would use that if you're not if you don't have the uh, focal reducer uh, in your imaging train. Um, so uh, the native, I believe, is like 2032, and I believe with the 7X reducer, it takes it down into the 1400 millimeter range. Uh, there was some conversation around the ZWO off-access guider. Um, should I get the ZWO OAG-L? The feedback I was getting was that the threads on the OAG-L was for only specific uh, ZWO cameras, of which I did not have. I have the uh, ASI 294MM and the ASI 533MC Pro. I, you know, we'll see how this off-access guider works. I have priced out the Celestron OAG. Um, I understand there's some nuances to trying to get the right back focus and uh, and all that so I'm just calling out that maybe this is not the off-axis guider that I go with um, in the longer term and then there were some spacers and I had originally ordered the ASI 290mm mini but again based upon the feedback from uh, uh, viewers I changed that camera so uh, here was uh, the initial. Let's go back and um, and see what else we got here. So let's go into um, well, let's cover this off. So I'm going to use the ZWO EAF, and uh, we'll see if that was a good decision or not. I had considered a moonlight uh, uh, device uh, for you. ASI Air Pro or Plus fans out there that often suggest to me that I move in that direction. I'm keeping everything uh, that needs to be controlled uh, ZWO right now. Uh, in the event at some point uh, I either um, try it out uh, just so I could do some videos around the uh, uh, Air Plus, ASI Air Plus or something. Or maybe I move into it for the longer term, but each time I use uh, Nina Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy, uh, I would just keep becoming a bigger and bigger fan. So I thought I'd point that out. So let's go back to the order history. That's the EAF. And then... So I moved to the ZWO ASI 174mm mini monochrome uh, for the guide camera to pair with the ZWO OAG. I understand this larger sensor size uh, may help me uh, identify uh, stars in the star field that maybe the 290 would have been uh, more challenging to do that. And then again, I understand that the... Uh, the OAG plays a role in that process, but uh, you know I'll find out as I go forward. The other thing was the uh, ADM uh, style DC8 dovetail plate. I wanted a top rail so I could mount my, uh, or have the option to mount my uh, U59B Link uh, mini computer as well as my GL iNet uh, Burl router. So I'm uh, picking up some real estate and I also have a Pegasus Astro uh, Pocket Power Box Advance. I think initially I'm going to be cannibalizing off of my uh, ZWO Xenostar uh, Z61 Mod 2 configuration uh, to, get the, uh, to get this kit uh, around the Celestron uh, up and running. Um, I, think that's, uh, I think that's what I'm going to have to wind up doing initially because... Uh, uh, right now, I'm kind of tapped out on available budget uh, dollars. Um, then the other thing I did was I ordered uh, 
the Celestron uh, aluminum dew shield and uh, cover cap along with the Celestron uh, dew heater. So I think that comprises uh, the list of items that I've, uh, that I've ordered and purchased and, and paid for. Okay, we don't want to go there. Um, now, um, something I need to do is figure out how I'm going to do my flats. Do I take a shot at doing sky flats in the early morning? Uh, when it's not cloudy and the sun's not up uh, high in the sky? Or do I move into, like, uh, I think, Spica Flat? And, uh, and I can't say the name right, but I, I think Primalus Lab has a G, Giotto uh, panel uh, that's new to the market. Uh, so this is a solution I have to figure out, but I'm going to have to wait. Uh, well, maybe a month or two, but now that I have the scope, I might have to do something more quickly. So doing sky flats is something that, or do, doing flats is something that I am going to have to figure out uh, how I get that done. All right, so um, I don't know. Uh, uh, this is, uh, let me just bring this beast back here. Um, This is it. Um, I haven't even taken the cover cap off yet. Uh, here's the, I guess the back end. And I'm gonna set that right here for right now. And what also comes with it is a uh, spotting scope, a diagonal, and an eyepiece for, uh, you know, the visual side of the configuration. So, um, yeah, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, you win the Stanley Cup or something, you get to hold the trophy, you know. You know, the question still remains, am I, uh, am I going to be successful or not? Uh, again, I'm very confident. Uh, that I'll find uh, a way to uh, produce good data and that good data then should allow me to um, produce uh, images that uh, meet my standards initially. Again, I'm, I'm still learning uh, PixInsight, but this book is really helping me. So a lot, uh, a lot to be seen yet with this longer focal length. Again, I think the one thing that is going to help me is that the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro is a good mount. Um, hopefully, it should enable me to limit uh, tracking noise. Um, and again, seeing will be what seeing will be. And uh, there's nothing really that I can, uh, can do about seeing that's... Uh, within my control anyway. All right. Well, I just wanted to give an update that, uh, you know, uh, I received uh, the, the scope. I still uh, need to receive some additional parts before I can start to put it on my mount and uh, configure the drive train. Uh, you know, I need the OAG. I need the uh, guide camera. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was kind of shocked uh, that I got it as quickly as I did. Uh, and I feel that I'm very fortunate to have found one that was in stock. And, um, you know, now it's time to build the procedure to bring it online, build that checklist, build how I uh, check the quality of uh, the configuration that I put together, start to dive in how I do collimation. Again, I think uh, MetaGuide. Uh, I think I was calling it Metro Guide in, uh, in another video, but MetaGuide is something I want to look at uh, as a possibility to help with collimation. So there's a whole host of things now that uh, I need to get started on. Um, and uh, we'll see how long it takes to get it up and running. Uh, the good thing in the meantime, I still have my uh, Xenostar uh, Mod uh, 2 
uh, that I can work with uh, and uh, you know continue to uh, focus on uh, on uh, wide field uh, imaging of uh, emission nebula uh, during the next month or so while I'm bringing the uh, Edge HD8 uh, online. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, uh, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciated all the comments and support and suggestions around the last video where I identified I'm getting the Edge 8, uh, the Edge HD 8. Uh, really appreciate that. They were very helpful, gave me a lot to think about, um, and uh, really got me pumped up that uh, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of fun, you know? And uh, that's what this hobby should be all about, I think, you know? having fun. I think if we stop having, if it stops being fun, I, I just can't imagine. Well, I can't imagine because I quit once before, but uh, when it stops being fun, then, you know, it, it's a terrible place to be, but uh, I'm re-energized and, uh, you know, uh, it's been fun since I got back uh, into the game. All right. Uh, clear skies, wherever you may be in the world. Other than that, see you next time and thank you for dropping into the channel.